Good morning. Good morning. Great, during today's Mass, let us think about the church season of Lent. This is a special time during the church year. During this Lenten season, let us all focus on God and the sacrifice he made for us. He gave his own son to us to thank him. We should all try to be the best Catholics that we can be. Today, we also honor all of those that we that have a mar March birthday, please stand and join in our opening song. Good morning, Sacred Heart. Let us gather together in prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and my sisters, as we gather together today celebrating these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins, knowing that Christ will always grant us mercy and his forgiveness if we but ask. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to attain the holy things to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph best of all his sons, so he had made him a long tunic. When his brothers saw that their father loved him best of all his sons, they hated him so much 
that they would not even greet him. One day, Israel said to Joseph, your brothers are attending our flock. flocks. Get ready. I will send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers. They saw him from a distance, and before he came up to them, they planned to kill him. They said to one another, here comes that master dreamer. Come on, let us kill him and throw him into one of the holes. Here we could say that a wild beast ate him. We shall then see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to save him from their hands, saying, we must not take his life instead just throw him into that hole there in the desert. His plan was to rescue him from there and then return him to his father. So when Joseph came up to them, they stripped him of the long tunic he had on. Then they took him and threw him into the hole. They then sat down to their meal, and looking up, they saw a group of Ishmaelites coming. Judah said to his brothers, What is to be gained by killing our brother and hiding his blood, rather letting us sail him to these Ishmaelites? After all, he is our brother. His brothers agreed. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelite for 20 pieces of silver. The word of the Lord. The response is, remember the marvels the Lord has done. When the Lord... When the Lord called down a fat man on the land and ruined the crops, he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. They had weighed him down and he was held with chains until his prediction prediction came to pass and the word of the Lord proved him true. The king sent and released him the Ruler of the people sent him free. He made him lord of his house and released of all his things.
to you, O words of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O words of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to his tenants and went on a journey. When the vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to the other tenants, who will give him the produce at the proper times. And Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. And it is wonderful in her eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they knew that he was speaking about them. And although they were attempting to arrest him, they feared the crowds, for they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord. Sacred Heart, we're in a very reflective time of year. What does the word reflective mean? Do you know what the word reflective means? What does the word reflective mean? What does the word reflective mean? What's the word reflective mean? Do you know it? Like, what, what, what's reflective mean? Well, Lent is a time of reflection, yes, yes. Uh, but what are, what are we reflecting on? Like, like uh, when, we, when we're reflective about something, when we're, what, what are we doing? What are we doing when we're reflecting on something? Do you know? Bouncing we're bouncing something back. So reflection. So reflection is one thing. So who are we re- reflecting? Who are we mirroring? Who are we mirroring this season of Lent? Who are we reflecting this season of Lent? Do you know? God. God. Jesus. So we're, we're reflecting him. We're trying to do that this Lent. But also, when we're reflecting on something, if we're thinking about something, we're, we're calling to mind something as well. So this season of Lent is a very reflective time. We reflect back on our past. We reflect on Jesus. And we try to reflect him in our hearts and our lives. So this is a reflective season. Um, even the garments I'm wearing is reflective. Who am I reflecting again? God, Jesus. If you, if you look over here, uh, I, know, I know occasionally um, you may look around during church. Even I did when I was a kid. I looked around. I, I got bored. And occasionally your eyes may, may stumble upon these things on the side of the wall. Do you know what these things are? Do you know what these things are? Do you know what they are? The pictures of Jesus. Do you know what? Do you know what? What they're what they're uh, portraying? Do you know what they're portraying? What they're showing? Uh, what he did and what he, who he saved. Yeah, what he did, um, and well, who he saved. Saved all of us. But so this shows. This is called the Stations of the Cross, and you see in this, you know, Jesus him falling down. And getting back up and making his way, journey all throughout 
all throughout the church. So as, as you look around, you'll see Jesus doing different things. Uh, eventually, uh, one day during this Lenten season, we'll go over the Stations of the Cross. But you see as you, as you walk around the church, you're walking with Jesus as he makes his way all the way back to the front, back to the cross, back to his death. So, last week, last week you didn't see me very much, right? I was, I was gone. I was gone home. My dad had knee surgery, so his knee is not too good. He's getting a little bit older, so he had knee surgery, so I was going home to help him. I was home caring for my dad a bit. Now, he's slow. It's kind of hard for him to walk, especially now that he had knee surgery. So he has a, he has a walker, and he's slowly walking. And, you know, that's sort of what we do during this season of Lent. We're, we're walking. We're walking. We're making the stations. We're walking with Jesus around the church. We're walking with Jesus in life. And on this bulletin board in the back, there's, there's something similar in church, too. But what do we do during Lent? What do we do during Lent? There's like three things that we're supposed to do to help, uh, help mirror Jesus even more. There's, I'll give you a, a hint. One of them is, is fasting. Do you know what the other two are? Do you know what the other two are? So one is fasting. What, what's another one? Do you know? Um. There's like three things. So something, fasting, another thing as well. Oh. We're, we're doing one right now where we're... I know one for school. We do like this at like 10 o'clock. We, we do a Lenten prayer. So. Yeah, prayer. Prayer is one. So, so prayer. So we got prayer. We got fasting, I said. And there's a third one back here. Uh, in the back of church as well, there's a little church you'll see. Um, you put, you can put a dollar in or other things to help out someone else. What's that called? It starts with an A. It starts with an A. Do you know what the, so prayer, fasting, and do you know what it is? Giving. giving. So almsgiving. So we give. So those are the three things that we do as, as Christians to sort of help us follow Jesus, to mirror him. And, you know, in the back of church as well, um, one of the things that I've been doing for Lent is actually on this bulletin board. I'm not going to tell you which one. You're going to have to look and see, see if, you can, if you can guess which one it is. But uh, all throughout Lent, um, we're being asked to write down, you know, what we're giving up or what we're doing or what we're praying for and to write it on here and to, you know, staple it on there. Because it is a journey. Um, we're all walking in the season of Lent. And who are we walking to? Who are we walking to as, we're, as we make the Stations of the Cross? So as we make the Stations of the Cross, we're walking around church. We're continuing to follow Jesus. We end up number 10, number 11, number 12. There's numbers on these. Number 13, number 14. And there's not a number on this one. Excuse me. And this is the 15th station up here. So who are we walking to when we make the Stations of the Cross this season of Lent? Who are we walking to? Say it all together. <laughs> Jesus. We're walking to Jesus. So, Sacred Heart, the season of Lent, we walk to Jesus by prayer, by fasting, by almsgiving. Just like my dad's learning how to walk again with his new knee. We need to learn how to walk during this season of Lent. Not, not walking towards candy, not walking towards, even though, even though uh, you, may, you may look towards me, uh, you're not walking towards me, you're walking towards this guy up there. Sacred Heart, I would now invite us to stand for intercessions. Invite forward our, our kids who are leading the intercessions. Please respond, Lord, our prayer. For those who are poor, that we may be generous toward them this Lent, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers and fathers, that they may give their children the care they need, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our teachers and friends that they may work together to make a classroom happy play a happy place we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for the sick and the suffering <coughs> that they may soon be well again we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer For all those that need our love and prayers, may they find the strength to carry on. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those that celebrate a birthday in March, may they find the year ahead of them to be full of blessings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this day, we also pray for Jack Gavin, for whom we remember in a special way. We pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, open our hearts to your love and help us always to walk with you this season of Lent. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I would now invite us to be seated as we prepare altar and bring forward the gifts.
And now invite us to stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May your merciful grace prepare your servants, O God, for the worthy celebration of these mysteries and lead them to it by a devout way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you and your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Now invite us to kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and sacred heart, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. I would now invite us to kneel again. Behold, behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and Sacred Heart, uh, before we stand, uh, I would invite you to be seated, I guess. Uh, as you know, today we celebrate a very special day for our March birthday children. Um, so anyone who has a March birthday, uh, please come forward. March birthdays. Any, any, as I always say, any adults that have March birthdays as well? Any March birthdays out there? Any March? Oh, we have, we have one March birthday. Uh, any others that I'm missing? Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Um, so, uh, so remember what we say today? We say our, our name. Kind of hard right there, our name. Our name. Uh, uh, what grade we're in? Um, maybe when our birthday is and how old we are. Oh, I'll help you, okay. My name is Emery, I'm in fifth grade. My birthday is March 28th, and I'll be 11. My name is Lee, and I'm in fourth grade. My birthday is March 14th, and I'm 10. My name is Catherine, I'm in fourth grade, and my birthday is March 4th, and I'm 10. My name is Alex, and my birthday is March 30th. is a special day for a birthday. Um, let us stand and let us pray. <clears throat> Having received this pledge of eternal salvation, we pray, O Lord, that we may set our course so well as to attain the redemption you promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.